Okay, I'm on. Hi everybody, it's Dara. And when five days goes by and I haven't made a video, I start to get itchy. And that day has come. I think today is the sixth day or the fifth day. And it doesn't really matter what I say right now. I just need to connect with you all. That being said, there are some things on my mind that I want to talk about. And I pulled out, what if you have the raw food munchies? What if you just all of a sudden need something? And if you have a bad choice or you want to make a good choice, I have some ingredients to keep on hand at all times to make a good choice. Really good idea. This one I started to peel and then didn't eat it, popped in the, it, this into the refrigerator. Very, very ripe bananas. I always keep dates in my refrigerator, medjool dates, and cacao nibs. Sometimes, if I'm, and I keep uh, almond butter and honey. So this honey is from shadelfarm.com. Uh, me and Mark. I love them. I use honey on occasion. I don't use it all the time. Locally harvested, responsibly, environmentally responsible honey is something I do from occasion, on occasion. So if you don't want to use that, Yacon syrup, a root from Peru, is really, really ex excellent. Y-A-C-O-N. And it's very low glycemic and it's very high in probiotics that will help your body have healthy flora. We want healthy flora to combat the icky stuff, okay? Our immune systems are in charge of keeping us healthy. So if we compromise our immune system with things we're allergic to, things that tax our body, like alcohol, um, coffee is one of them for me. So it lowers my immune system so that when my body needs to attack a germ or some kind of thing that's going around, um, it wouldn't be readily available. All the healthy um, white blood cells are going towards fixing the things that I'm taking in. And that's why raw food is so amazing because it's not seen uh, to, in our body as a toxin. It's helping us digest, it's helping us, it's feeding our cells, it's nutrient rich if you do it the right way. So, and the right way basically just means a lot of leafy greens. Um, so we don't want to eat raw food cheesecakes every day. And I don't eat tons of almond butter. But in a pinch, isn't it nice to know you can slice a banana, drizzle some yacon syrup, sprinkle some cacao nibs, which are basically just the cacao bean, it's kind of like a coffee bean, crushed up, sprinkled on top, and you have an amazing dessert that keeps you satisfied. Uh, you could go a little further and mash up the banana with some almond butter, and that's my raw food munchie tip for the day. The other thing I want to talk about is following our hearts. You hear that a lot. It seems kind of vague. How about listening to our intuition, our gut? How about the fact that our gut and our hearts are as smart, if not smarter, than our brain? And our brains have been given so much press. And we use our brains all the time, and there's nothing wrong with that. Analyze this, this, but if I do this, then this will happen. But you could go into this whole situation where all you're doing is thinking and forgetting about your body. And for me, since I'm highly intuitive, and many of us are, what we're feeling in our bodies is all we need to know. If we spend time with somebody and after we feel drained, that's enough information. If we're doing a job we don't like and we feel not happy about it, that's enough. If there's stress, if there's sadness, if there's this energy feeling of just yuck, it's very different from doing the things that we love. So when we listen to our guts and our hearts or follow the passion, follow the heat, go where the excitement is, we will not be led astray. And I am living example, living proof of that. I have done that my entire life. If something doesn't work, I look at it. I decide this really isn't making me happy. I think about maybe what else I'd like to do and I move towards that pretty quickly. And it's, it's something that you learn through time. If you make enough mistakes not listening to your intuition or your heart, you know those times and you knew deep down inside that you knew the truth before you made the mistake. You knew the truth and all that is is just a lesson to listen to the intuition next time because those times that you do, it's the best feeling. So what's the best way to listen to your heart? What's the best way to hear the voice of intuition or listen to your gut? 
okay? Well, one of the very first things is to clean up the body. How possibly can we hear our beautiful little hearts that just want to like expand and burst open if they're constricted and clogged? And clogging happens from the oils that are cooked that shouldn't be cooked because they change molecular structure and clog up our arteries. The refined sugars and the wheats and the uh, white flours and the fried foods and the nitrates and the chemical, any of those things that I hardly ever talk about because I'm like, wow, people still eat them? Those things are poison to our bodies. So therefore, our bodies are fighting the attack of those things and we're not doing the level of cleansing that our bodies do naturally. We're always on a cleanse. We are always cleansing the things we put in and the things that are in our environment. Why not give our bodies the fuel that we need, the food that we need to detoxify so that all the blood rushing to our heart, all the oxygen is giving our hearts everything it needs so that the heart just becomes expanded and the energy from the heart becomes expanded and then there's nothing blocking. The cells aren't clogged, the lymph isn't clogged, the veins aren't clogged, the skin isn't clogged, our aura isn't clogged and therefore our energy is clean and clean energy allows us to have messages from above, messages from within, from our own hearts. I remember just thinking years ago when I would see people walking around and you see somebody who's overweight and you think, I could almost see their, their red heart inside and I could almost feel like the, the clogging around it and just how sweet it would be if that heart got to be free and full and expanded. And so when we clean up our bodies, it's very directly related to our organs, our liver that stores anger, our guts that house intuition, our, um, our sexuality, our, our hearts that will lead us in the right way where our soul needs to go, our um, eyes, our sense of smell, everything, our third eye, everything, everything spiritual then just opens up. So eating raw isn't everything, but it's the first thing. Eating a high raw diet with some clean cooked food if you prefer, but clean food, organic food, that's the thing. That's the first thing. It's not the only thing. There's a whole lifestyle. There's a whole beautiful life to live that goes beyond food. But I guess what I do here is that I show you that making food our priority is fun. Making our food, food our priority is abundant and a luxury and tastes good and looks good and beyond that feels good. So when we follow the first protocol, which is the healthy food, after that we're like, I want to move my body. I don't want to be sedentary. I feel so good. And we naturally start working out and then our limb system moves and then we get creative ideas and the creative ideas are like wait what if I did this that thought wouldn't have happened if your body's all clogged and your brain's all clogged okay so we get these ideas that come from anywhere they could come from out there they could come from here they could come from here they can come from here and we're able to assimilate we're able to feel ah that feels really good if I go towards that so really the first thing is clean up the second thing is to identify and to be extremely discerning about how things make us feel, which is why I'm always talking about decluttering, how people make us feel, why I talk about relationships, how places make us feel because they affect us too, um, and, and address those things. And notice when you say no to the things that don't feel good and you say yes to the things that do, things in your life change. And it's normal to, normal to vacillate. It's normal to get afraid. It's normal to think, well, if I step out of my comfort zone, I'm not supposed to do that. People will think that's crazy. I shouldn't do that. I've been trained in this. I know how to do this. I've spent a lot of money on education about this. Uh, what will they think? What will this person think? I'm here to tell you it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. They're not living in your shoes. They're not in your body. It's not their life that you're wasting away by doing things you don't like. Your life force is essential. Your life's happiness is why we are here. So I was talking to Herbie, my 85-year young dad, who I call him Hermie, he's my stepdad, but he's, he's 
we talked about his life. And at 85, nine months ago, he went raw vegan, organic vegan at first. Now he only wants raw food. And he said that he's really loving life. He's in love with this lifestyle. And we talked about some of the other things that make a person good all around. And that's community, doing things you love, feeling blessed, feeling grateful. Um, he always took time for himself to do the things he liked to do. And so those things are important as well. And they weigh in pretty heavily, the love feeling, the gratitude feeling, all of that stuff. So raw food is the beginning. Raw food consistently plays a part. Eating organic fruits and veggies is an everyday practice. And then everything else starts to naturally appear and blossom. So when I say it's the beginning thing and the first thing and it's the most important thing, it's true because isn't food and shelter, don't we as humans need to, we always orchestrated our lives around where the most bountiful food was, where the most nutritious food was. And when there wasn't nutritious food, we would move on. And so now food is such an afterthought. It's a, oh, I'll just fill my belly so I'm not hungry. Oh, I'll have some, something so it tastes good. Oh, I'll eat because it's social. Oh, I'll drink because it's social. And for me, yes, food can be social. It's an act of love. But the first thing is to think about how we're fueling our bodies so that we can do what we're here to do, the magic that we're here to do. And magic does happen. I will tell you, serendipities are happening in my life. It's extraordinary. I think, oh, I'd like to blah, blah, blah. And the next thing, it might appear the next week. Um, two years ago, I thought I would like if somebody lived in an apartment downstairs so I could help transform their life and document it. And all of a sudden, I was sitting here and I'm like, wait a minute, that's happening. And so many things, I can't even tell you, so many things um, are happening. And really, sometimes all you have to do is just intend it, not worry about the details, but say, I envision this happening. And the, the details aren't important. It can happen. So the first thing is taking care of our bodies as our temples. Our bodies are, are our churches. They are, they are a place where our souls reside for the time that we're here. They are our soul's chariots. So it is time for us to take care. And reversing of disease and reversing of symptoms of disease and reversing weight gain is so possible. In as much as two weeks of trying this lifestyle, you can see amazing results. It happened to Herbie, my dad. He felt like Superman in two weeks. Nine months later, it's almost freaky. Every time I look at him, I think, oh my gosh, you look younger, like, every day. So, on that note, my friends, my YouTube family, if nothing else, please grab, grab something green, go to the market, get a big bunch of fresh romaine, wash it really well, chop it really well, put some hemp oil on it, some Udo's 369 for essential fatty acids, a little bit of really good extra virgin olive oil, put avocado on it, put some pinch of pink Himalayan salt, squeeze some fresh citrus on it, mix it up, Throw some spirulina on it if you want. It's a blue-green allergy for extra protein and it makes it just feel really rich. Chop in whatever veggies you want. Make a huge bowl. Have it for dinner. Have it for lunch. Chew it really well so you can digest it. Maybe even throw some probiotics and some enzymes on top. In any case, make that big bowl of salad. Think of me. Make the best choices you can. From that one salad, your whole life can change. It will reverberate and affect the changes that you make for all the other choices, food choices throughout the rest of the day and the next day. Because we want to wake up feeling really good. That's the game. So for the premise of optimal weight, whether it's weight gain or weight loss, prevention of disease and needless suffering, um, being good examples and caring for ourselves for our loved ones so that we can take care of ourselves for all of those reasons, for creativity, for libido, for mental clarity, for mental health, for mental wellness, for all of those reasons, start here. Find my one true thing green soup and make it. Make a salad. Simulate the things that you like to eat in the outside world Make them at home. Make that, make that your one true thing so that you know how to satisfy yourself. And I promise your life 
will get exponentially better. And on that note, get your grains on and I will see you really soon.